Damon G here doing a review for Young Rock episode one of season three returns November 4th on NBC as well as the replay on November 5th on Peacock. Season three, episode one, the show now shifts to Friday night in a more prominent time spot. So obviously something good is happening from this show. Me as a wrestling fan, enjoyed watching episode one. It was kind of random in many places. <laughs> there were some things I didn't recognize. It was a nice little homage to his early career. Uh, there were some things in this, in this episode. Again, I don't really know episodes, uh, seasons one and two, I should say. Uh, I'm only catching it now on season three, but the episode tagline starts with, after losing the election, Dwayne Johnson is ready to withdraw from politics. But in 1985, Rocky learns that there's consequences to crossing Vince, end quote. So this episode, I'm going to try to be as non-spoilerific as possible. Uh, it involves a lot of his growing up in WWF, uh, been chronicling back to his father's career as it chronicles WWF as well, and the fallout for double crossing or putting the knife in the back of Vince McMahon, uh, because when you cross the boss, things tend to happen in WWF or WWE, and you know Vince McMahon does not play that. So random people popped up in this episode. First off, I did not have Randall Park and Dwayne Johnson chatting as if they're BFFs on my 2022 bingo card. This may be something that we've seen in, in previous seasons. I have not. I, I'm going into the show blind. <laughs> so off the bat, I'm thinking, Randall Park, Dwayne Johnson. Okay, cool. And apparently, like it says in the opening show stanza, Dwayne Johnson, not The Rock, Dwayne Johnson in current form, apparently lost the presidential election and is withdrawing from politics and has become a bit of a shut-in and hasn't been seen a lot since the end of the election. So what I've noticed already in this show, and again, going in blind, is that current day Dwayne is narrating about previous growing up Dwayne Johnson, i.e. The Rock, before he becomes The Rock. So you're, you're privy to his life, uh, watching his dad, being a little kid, going to meet other WWF superstars of yesteryear, you know, there, there's some random appearances from the Iron Sheik, Captain Lou Albano, Mankind, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't really dig the actor they use for Vince McMahon. I don't know. It just didn't sit well with me. Pat Patterson, Cindy Lauper, which is played by a very familiar face in Rebecca Quinn. You all should know if you're WWE fans who that is. But the episode kind of chronicles his early career as it parallels his father, and the way they outline this episode is a very interesting parallel where Rocky Johnson makes a couple of bad business decisions that starts his downfall in the world of professional wrestling. And uh, there's a foray into the independent circuit, which is totally different back then to what it is now. Uh, the independent circuit's a lot more lavish now, a lot more a lot more promotional value, a lot more bigger stages, a lot of bigger stages uh, as opposed to WWF days or back in the 80s when you had territories where you had people wrestling in quote unquote bingo halls, car dealerships, uh, random, random barnyards and the like. As I was saying, random, random places and random things happened in this episode. It was a lot to keep up with. But again, I caught at the very least Captain Lou off a you know, from the Samoan SWAT team, uh, Stone Cold, Mankind, Vince McMahon, Hulk Hogan, Cindy Lauper, Chunk from the Goonies, Mr. T, Pat Patterson, uh, Danny Garcia, which is The Rock's ex-wife, which would go on to be his wife. There's an Abraham Lincoln motif. There's some things with baseball and watermelons you're going to have to watch and see because that's kind of random. You got The Rock's grandma, you got The Rock's mom. There's a whole hodgepodge of people in here. But there was a lot of moments in this episode where I found myself asking out loud, what am I watching? <laughs> uh, so maybe some of you who have watched Young Rock before knows the, the setup. Uh, I'm thinking this is very akin to Everybody Hates Chris. Rock's narrating, Dwayne's narrating, but I did not expect him to be narrating to one 
Randall Park, uh, Jimmy Wu from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, who is a really, really good actor, uh, if you remember Fresh Off the Boat. Uh, but they're, they're just chopping it up, sitting in The Rock's house, having a chat about the life, about the life of a WWF superstar, about his quotes to Teddy Roosevelt. Ironically enough, the president calls Dwayne at some point in this episode. <sighs> just a lot. There's a lot of Easter eggs to, di to digest here. Uh, it, just too much. So you're going to have to watch the episode because if I say any more, it's going to spoil it for all of you. But I want to remind everybody, Young Rock Season 3, Episode 1, The People Need You, going to drop on NBC on November 4th. And on November 5th, it drops on Peacock. So, again, I don't know what to think about this. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. It's a great telling of the early seasons or early portions of Rocky's career from the Rocky My Via days. That's what's covered uh, him winning the Intercontinental Championship. Here's a little fact that a lot of people don't know about me personally. If you see me on the Big Gold Belt Wrestling Podcast or other wrestling productions, I actually saw The Rock's first debut match in Survivor Series 1996 in Madison Square Garden where he debuted as the blue chipper, Rocky Maivia, on his Survivor Series team, and he was the sole survivor in 1996. And that was from my hometown of New York City in Madison Square Garden, and I was in the house for that. Had I known <laughs> The Rock would be who he is today, I would have saved that ticket stub. Uh, but that was my first foray into seeing Dwayne Johnson live in living color as Rocky Maivia, who had a really good theme song. I actually like his first theme song before he joined the Nation of Domination. But the way the camera cuts are in this show, they show a lot of parallels between his dad's career and his dad's matches versus his matches, moves his dad did versus moves he did as they kind of do a compare and contrast uh, as they parallel each other's career at that stage of the game. But for episode one for season three, I enjoyed myself. I found myself asking two chains, what was I watching here? <laughs> it was random as heck, as I said before. So many random wrestling cameos. A chunk from the Goonies, which... I did not like as a movie. Let's just throw it out there now. My fellow nerds out there, I did not like the Goonies film. Seen it twice, didn't like it. But Mr. T shows up. Cindy Lauper shows up. So pretty cool. Liberace has a small, uh, small cameo because this is done. The flashback was to the first WrestleMania and the reasons why potentially Rocky Johnson wasn't on the card. Uh, it's not really a spoiler. You could just look that up on on wikipedia or google and see that rocky johnson was not on the card but there's a reason for that what was it you're gonna have to watch the show to find out and find out what the quote means about taking the knife out of vince mcmahon's back but that's from young rock season three episode one titled the people need you dropping november 4th on nbc and then on november 5th on the peacock streaming app moving to the friday time slot which is probably a little better than the tuesday time slot so you got three seasons of the show. You must see something in it. But this is Damon G, Big Go Belt Media. Thank you so much. Young Rock, Season 3, Episode 1. The People Need You, NBC, November 4th, and Peacock, November 5th. Catch you next time. Be safe and be well.